Well, it finally happened. My number one most anticipated movie of all time has been officially scrapped, kicked to the curb, much like apparently uh, one of the two people joining me today, Andrew Fantasia, he is packing right now. If you look behind him, he is ready to skedaddle. He works for DC and is no longer employed. Andrew's joining me and so is Rob. Rob is uh, actually uh, in charge of DC. So send him all your letters. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, yeah, welcome. It's nice to see you guys again. It's just the news to talk about. News. Sad news. News. Well, very sad news. Uh-huh. It's, you know, this news is funny because DC had like the most underwhelming San Diego Comic Con of all time. Like, it was like, they're like, let's just throw the rock out there and pray that people are obsessed with the rock like they were 10 years ago. I don't think they, I think people still like the rock. Don't get me wrong. He's like, I think he's the number two most followed human being on the planet on social media. I think Cristiano Ronaldo is like number one. And then number two is the rock. And then I think it's like Taylor Swift or a Kardashian or something. So like he's, he's really popular. I'm not disputing his popularity. But I don't think it was enough to carry DC when Marvel walked in and said, hey, everything. And there's a big difference between Marvel and DC, and that is when Marvel says, here's everything, we are pretty certain we are getting everything but in humans, the movie. We're getting <laughs> everything. But like when DC says, here's everything, we're like, ah, eh, something random is going to come up, and that's what we're going to get that's not on that board versus it. And be- just before Comic-Con, uh, they did do a test screening of the Batgirl movie. And I know Batgirl, on- Batgirl updates on Twitter was like, it's positive. But I actually heard it was kind of mixed. It was like split, uh, which was, I think, what everybody was anticipating since it is. A- First of all, it was made for HBO Max. We're going to get into that later. But also it was incomplete. There was, you know, uh, the-, the effects weren't finished and stuff like that did not happen. But before we get into anything, last night the news dropped, Andrew. Were you... Uh, surprised by the well, I wasn't because it wasn't last night. Whatever. Were you surprised by the news of Bad Girl being shelved? And uh, how happy were you that you won't have to suffer through something that's probably better than Morbius? I <laughs> I was surprised. I got the news from you, not from the twits. Uh, you sent me the thing, and I was out all day. But when I got home, I looked at it. And I'm like, oh god, really? Um, and it's funny because it feels so silly to say this about A, a movie, but B, a movie that, you know, I never even got to see. So who knows how good or bad it could have been. So it feels weird to even say this, but I I think a lot of people will kind of understand what I mean, that it really feels like somebody that I don't know died. Like that's the feeling I'm getting just in terms of how, how much there are people who are not, specifically me, who this is horrible news for them. And I can't help but empathize with that and be like, oh man, I feel so bad for all those people. I feel bad for for Leslie, for the directors, for everybody who worked on this film. And for, you know, people, I was one of those people who was really excited for it. I'm sure there were people even way more excited than me, especially particularly Batgirl fans or just fans of uh, uh, like these actors and creators. So there's, like, I am so low on the totem pole of who gets affected by this. I'm just like a random dude who was really looking forward to a Batgirl movie where she had a purple suit. But I feel kind of sucker punched by this. So I can only imagine how it feels to be some of those people. Rob, what about you? I mean, yeah, I was shocked too. I expected this movie to probably come out as normal for HBO Max, especially that, you know, seemingly all the money was already spent on it. I mean, obviously there was more post-production stuff that was going to be spent on it, but it was like the movie was shot. The movie was reshot. The reshoots already happened, right? Like the the money on this movie was spent. And the fact that, you know, just Warner Brothers and HBO and Zaslav specifically, I suppose, uh, chose to, you know, that it was more financially feasible seemingly to just, cut this movie and take the tax money is a little shock is a little shocking to me, but it's just like, you know, it's, it's still along with some of these projects that they've just inherited that seemingly don't aren't a part of their vision. Yeah. And that's the vision of what, but I don't know if they have a vision yet. I feel like the the hiring of Alan Horn, we're, we're getting closer and closer to some sort of 
a vision for what's going on over there, specifically what's going on over with DC. Uh, you know, because just recently, uh, Ben Affleck is now going to be in Aquaman 2, and all the reports are that he's just replacing Michael Keaton in the in the end credit scene or whatever. Because because the, the Michael Keaton stuff can't exist because the Flash has been delayed for so long. So now Michael Keaton's cut out of Aquaman 2 and just removed from Batgirl, which means his he's only going to have one appearance now, from three to one appearance in this new DCEU, and I know a lot, a lot of the younger fans are probably happy about that because I think a lot of young fans were, were excited about Michael Keaton the way people were excited about Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield returning. So you have that Ben Affleck returning. A lot of people are excited about that. Could the door be open now for Affleck to return permanently as Batman? But the other thing with Batman, guys, is we have the Batman, the, the, the Matt Reeves Batman. I made a lot of money, but is that financially... Uh, was that financially successful enough for the new the new group over at Warner Brothers to to go ahead with a sequel? Or are they going to kibosh that and just bring Affleck in, and they're going to just make Marvel universe? Like, wh Rob, what what are your thoughts on all of that? I mean, yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, the, the only reason why I wasn't as shocked as I would have been um, yesterday when I found out the backer was being cut was the fact that about this whole story about Aquaman two and. Uh, Michael Keane supposedly supposed to be in it because originally it was supposed to happen after it was supposed to come out after the flash. And then now Ben Affleck's going to seemingly be in it in his place. And now another Michael Keane thing is gone, which kind of like made me go, it's like, okay, so, you know, maybe Ben Affleck is coming back. Maybe he's going to be the new DCU's Batman again. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, him, David Zaslav and Ben Affleck are like this now. And they're just like, Hey, come back and be me, my Batman. And, you know, um, that, that, that probably sounded a little bit dirty to some people, but still, I mean, literally as in Batman for the universe, but, uh, yeah, like it, it's, I, 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 I see it more and more as a possibility that Ben Affleck could be coming back as Batman more full time now again. And I mean, he's happy being Miss Jennifer Lopez, Mr. Jennifer Lopez now as well. So, I mean, yeah, with, with the Pattinson thing, like, I still think that's going to keep going no matter what because of just how well seemingly that, that movie was received and, you know, the Oscar campaign that they're probably going to make for some parts for certain uh, parts of this movie. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I think that's still going to happen, but how they're going to, you know, manage that along with, you know, Ben Affleck potentially coming back as Batman is going to be an interesting uh, juggle that they're going to have to do from now on. Andrew. I didn't even know Keaton was supposed to be an Aquaman. It's like you said it just now. So, um, the, well, that's it. Was only a part. It was only a part of the story now because Ben Affleck. I think like uh, it only came out now. I think. Okay. So yeah, we went. Right. So I did a video on it, like a little short video on it, a few months ago. That the rumor was that there was an end credit scene where Aquaman goes to Batman, and oh, Batman okay. ends up being Michael Keaton. Um, but it was still like I think that was it. Was it wasn't confirmed or anything? It was just like a leaked story. And then yeah, no one really knew. And then the Ben Affleck thing really, really blew the doors open. Right. Well, I mean, the whole Affleck and I'm going to throw Cavill into the mix here too. The whole Affleck and Cavill of it all. The only sort of buzz that existed about DC all summer seemed to be about those two people. Mm. It seemed to be about how much Affleck are we getting again and how much Cavill are we getting again? Uh, I mean, they have a Super Pets movie that they just put out. Apparently, that was, you know, something they didn't mind putting out. Um, and even that got less chatter than this whole theoretical, will we get Cavill, will we get Affleck? Um, and it's a weird thing for people to be talking about, considering none of the slate up ahead had anything to do with either of them until Affleck got spotted on the Warner lot, right? It was a whole bunch of other stuff they were, you know, laying the groundwork for, and everybody just kept talking about those two. So now that this has happened, this Batgirl thing has happened, I can't help but wonder, like, is this reactionary? Um, is this just, again, even if it was reactionary, it doesn't even make any sense to me because yeah. you can still have Batgirl and still bring those two actors back and other things. I, um, I think right now i'm just looking at 
what we have in front of us, which is Black Adam, Shazam, Aquaman, and eventually Flash. <laughs> and I feel like right now, I'm going to just like from this moment on until they are in a theater, I'm going to act like none of those four movies exist. Because right now I just I don't I don't trust Zaslav and I don't trust WB. And I am going to theoretically look at those four movies as hostages in a bank and them as Al Pacino and Dog Day Afternoon. And like <laughs> it, it is uh they don't they will not see the light of day until they do. That's how so, I'm looking at it. Steve, friend of the show, Steve. Who uh, he comes on here? He his whole thing with DC movies is until he has a ticket, he does not believe it's happening. Yeah. And today he texts me. He goes, "They are just proving me more right by doing all this." And he's not wrong. Like, how can you get excited about anything they say? Any okay? We saw an Aquaman two footage. They might still be like, "Eh, screw it. We don't want Aquaman anymore." <laughs> they, I mean, it made a billion dollars to get Aquaman two, but who knows though. Because it's the one thing that Batgirl had going against it, though, guys, versus Shazam or Black Adam or Super Pets or uh, The Flash is that it was made under the old regime for HBO Max. And the new regime almost wants nothing to do with HBO Max. I don't think they see that as a profitable idea. There's an article just came out now. They are going to be laying off 70, 70 percent of their uh, scripted series or, and movie cr uh, uh, creatives. 70%. They're not going to be focusing. They're going to leave it for regular HBO, but HBO Max will no longer have the scripted content. 70%. So I imagine Peacemaker, stuff like that will still appear on there. That, I mean, huge hits like that. But 7-0%. They're going to lay them off. Some people are anticipating that HBO Max might even go the way of the Dodo. A lot of speculation around all that. They're not into that. And Batgirl had going against it. It was made for HBO Max on a budget a little bit more, a little bit more than the Morbius budget. So it was an it was an okay budget. So it was a budget that they deemed too big for HBO Max, but a movie itself not big enough for a theatrical release. And the, they're starting to get into the leaks now of what the movie was about and the plot. We're not going to go into that stuff too much because it's it's all hearsay still because no one's. You know, no one here has seen it, and we're just saying what other people said. But it sounded like it was a more grounded superhero film. It wasn't a big uh, spectacle. You know, they didn't need to save the world. Uh, rumor was that Barbara Gordon dressed up as Batman for Halloween and then just started fighting crime dressed up as Batman. And that's how it kind of happened. And Michael Keaton only had apparently, reportedly, five scenes is what they're saying now. That's more than I thought he would have, to be honest. <laughs> well, there was speculation that he would train her and stuff like that, but none of that happened. He just kind of was like, what are you doing on my streets, I guess? I don't know. But So that's what's coming out. So it kind of it had the misfortune of not being small enough for HBO Max but not being big enough for the and and this is in the opinion of the new regime at yeah. Warner and not not being big enough for a theatrical release. People are making the joke now though. They're like Warner's won't even release Batgirl, but Sony's like we'll release Morbius twice. <laughs> and that's the joke that's going on right now. So that that's I think that's the reality of Batgirl is that is that unfortunately they looked at the numbers and the best course of action financially for the studio was to uh, just toss it. If they could take that tax right off whatever it is that they can get. They never release it, never see a penny, and they lose less money than they think they would theatrically and on HBO Max, which they don't see as a viable source of revenue for the company anymore. Yeah, and then the HBO Max thing is interesting because that's one that they've seemingly been talking about and they've been pulling back on HBO Max. I mean, Jason Kalar, the guy that made the decision mm -hmm. to release all of the Warner Brothers movies of the 2021 slate straight onto HBO Max, like he's gone. Like he was the guy that was full, fully all in on HBO Max. You know, everything I've read when Zaslav has talked about HBO Max is that he was he's not interested in becoming like. Um, all in on the streaming service like Disney and, and Netflix are because every time he's talked about it is that, you know, when you look at the profit margins for each of those two streaming services, they're still in the red, right? They're, they're, they're still, they're spending more money than they're making because they're hoping to, uh, get, uh, you know, get, get to the point where they're getting, making enough money. I mean, I think they're trying to get closer and closer and maybe he's taking what's happening with Netflix over the past, you know, year, 
uh, six months or so as a kind of like blueprint, as in like, this is what could happen if we keep doing this and keep spending more money than we're making with HBO Max. And maybe that's why he's pulling back on it and trying to go back the more traditional way, making it in movie theaters and releasing movies in movie theaters. And this was a part of the art, one article I read as well about Batgirl, how they felt that it was like, yeah, like what you said, James, mm-hmm. where apparently it was very low scale and like the action wasn't as big. And, and there were some reports about the, like when they, in that test screening that the suits look cheap and stuff like that so you know they were they were speculating in this article that like to, to buff it up like and go through another round of reshoots they would have to add another 10 couple 10 or something million dollars plus spend the money on marketing to if they actually wanted to put it on movie theaters and a, a bunch of other costs that would apparently 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 uh, double the cost that they would have to do by the end of it all so that would just make it seemingly un, 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 unfeasible and especially coming out that, you know, a lot of people didn't, didn't seem to like it and some people did and, and so forth. And, you know, that's, that's from their test screening audiences. We hear about test screening audiences all the time and some of them, some of them turn out being true. Some of them don't, but regardless, it just seems like what Zaslav to me is interested. And this is what gives me actually a little bit of faith in this whole thing is that Zaslav seems to be looking at this project as one that he would not have greenlit when it was originally there. And now he's looking at this project as moving forward with the DCU. Is this going to improve the DCU's um, um, viewpoint, like the way, the way it looks to the common fan, or is it going to hurt it? And I think it sounds like he thought it was going to hurt it. So that's why he axed it. That's why, I I mean, I still fully believe that black Adam and Shazam are coming out because the fact that he put, put the, uh, um, put it out onto the comic-con stage and he's fully promoting and stuff like that i fully believe that those movies are coming out i even yeah. think that aquaman 2 is coming out as well oh, yeah. uh, because uh yeah th- that, that movie like i it, noticed it, you never said the flash though I, i'm not saying the flash. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm i'm very uncertain about the flash honestly i'm i'm still like wondering like it, it all depends on you know if it's like oh yeah you know what maybe we'll release this and then another bit of ezra miller use comes out he you know punches a baby in uh in thailand or something like that sorry what's funny rob is that that doesn't sound like a made-up article yeah, yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing with the flash though and i think black, black adam and shazam too they're safe whatever but but the, the flash because people are like how is the flash still happening the flash costs something like 300 million dollars to make and all the test screenings, every time a test screening happens, the one thing, the one constant that you keep hearing is that it's a good movie. That's yeah. the one thing that keeps that is it's, it's a good movie. So if Ezra Miller is an issue, they'll fix that issue somehow, some way. They will, they'll let the movie come out and be like, he's done as a Flash. This is last time as a Flash. We're moving on. Enjoy this movie with him. And the Michael Keaton thing, Michael Keaton might be Batman throughout that entire movie. But at the end of the movie, there's a the rumor that the post credit scene is Ben Affleck saying, Barry, come find us. So they've always left that door open for Batfleck to return. And if they want to, they could just shoot a scene or they could just be like, oh, yeah, Barry came and found us right away and then do it. And then the other thing is, like, everyone's like Henry Cavill, because there's also the rumor that Zod kills baby, uh, baby Superman in that movie on Grip Time. But that could still happen. You could still have Supergirl. But then when it all comes to play, you can have both Supergirl and Superman Henry Cavill show up. Because you could do whatever you want. Like, once you cross the streams, you're good to go. So I feel like that's the other thing. Is like, it costs so much money. It's supposed to be really good. And it le- and it allows them the opportunity to do whatever they want to do after that. So they need to find – they still need to find their Feige, though, Fantasia. Exactly. I, thought they, I thought they said crossing the streams was bad, though, James. It's it bad until <laughs> Gozer shows up, right? The second Gozer shows up, it's like, oh, screw that. Let's yeah, cross like, those streams and, then, then the, and then the second time Gozer shows up, they're like, our go-to move, guys, let's cross those streams. Yeah, total platonic reversal is not a real thing anymore. Um, the, uh, the D, If DC wants to have what Marvel has, and I'm assuming they do, maybe that's a, a bad assumption to make, but I think we all assume the people in charge of Warner Brothers want the DC movies to have what the Warner what the Marvel movies have in terms of quality, quantity, and fandom, right? They, mm-hmm. I, I think it's safe to say they want that. Yeah. If you want that, using the Flash movie to your benefit right now is the way to get it. 
without pissing on everything that came before. It's literally the way to have your cake and eat it too. It's the way to say the Flash movie is going to do this to the time stream and the multiverse or whatever, and it's going to be the gunshot that starts the real DC cinematic universe uh, with some more effort put into it this time. But it's not going to undo what came before because we still have Batflick, we still have Cavill, we're still referencing those. But Flash just did a thing like he always does in the comics that creates some kind of new multiverse, some kind of new time stream. And now that's where we're going. And that's what's going to make us like Marvel. And everybody who is a fan of those, great, they're still here. And everybody who wasn't a fan of those, you don't have to worry anymore because now we're going to streamline and make everything even better than they were before. The Flash is gift wrapped for you to do that. So if that movie gets canceled the way Batgirl does, then what that just tells me is they either don't want to be like Marvel at all, uh, or they are just the biggest idiots in the entertainment industry right now. I can't, my, I, sir, I sorry, my only, my only thing that I'm thinking about that is that, you know, like the Flash movie, either way, like, you know, script that greenlit, the, all the shooting that was done, that was a part of the other regime. That was not Zaslav. He had nothing to do with that. So mm. that's the thing is that is if it ends in a certain way that that's the way Zaslav wants to move forward with the DCU or whether they have to go back again and reshoot stuff and, and, and so forth. And then that comes into the Ezra Miller problem. It's like, uh, are you going to bring him back for reshoots? If you want to reshoot the ending if to represent your new DCU, like, you know, that's these are part of the many problems and things that challenges that they have to decide on and right. uh, think about Thank they could just leave the flash as is with Michael Keaton and uh, Sasha Kaya as your Batman and Supergirl and then go from there. And then, but you still, I mean, and look, but you bring Batfleck back, obviously, but you find a way to do it in the next one. And then you, and then you course correct your plan from there, however you want to do it. I, or just you change an end credit scene, you reshoot an end credit scene, whatever. But then what if Ben Affleck doesn't want to come back to Batman full time? That's the other thing. You don't know. Like, we don't know that. What if he just was like, I'm happy playing with Jason Momoa because we're buddies. I'm happy doing it. Like, you know, maybe he'll do those things, but maybe he doesn't want to be full time. He did say he had a he had the most fun he ever had playing Batman in the Flash. He did say that. So maybe, you know, maybe there's a, a, a future with him as Batman in some capacity that they – don't explore in the flash because they're like, we've spent enough money on this movie. Let's explore in the next movie. And maybe you just let the flash come out, do its thing. And then you're like, yeah, let's move on. I, I, I anyway, I, I, what they're doing with the, the reset that the flash does. It's kind of like, if it is all true, what you hear it's it, it was a gamble, right? It's like, they're like, well, we're going to get rid of Superman and we're going to get rid of Batman. And we're going to replace with Michael Keaton, who everybody over uh, 35 loves. And we're going to replace Superman with Supergirl, who, Maybe they'll love. We apparently she's great in the movie too. Like we got to bring that up. Apparently she like, I think people have said that she steals the scene she's in. They steal, she almost steals the movie. People love her in the movie. That's what I'm hearing. I don't know if that's going to be enough for everybody to forget. Superman, who is like the most iconic superhero of all time. But I mean, it's a good sandbox to play in. That's a good problem to have. Is if you have a really strong Supergirl and a really strong Superman that might demand too much money. But maybe with Zaslav. Maybe the new regime is willing to put up a truckload of money to his doorstep and get him to return to Superman because he's probably the best Superman we've had and he's the best Superman we have right now. You know, and 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 what if the next Superman they get isn't as good? You know, what if we're just like, hey, right? You know, you people that didn't like Henry Cavill, like, oh, I kind of miss Henry Cavill right now. You know, that's the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. You guys heard it, uh, WB and uh, CW. Shots fired from James right at you, Tyler Hecklin, the uh, right. Superman and Lois uh, Superman. You're not good enough. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you know what's funny is The Flash is going to end next year, and The Flash show was announced right at like, the same time as The Flash, as Miller being cast as The Flash. For oh, my God. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Nine years! Nine years! How do you – this is the biggest problem of all. This is not the new regime's fault. Obviously, how have you got nine years, no Flash? And I brought this up to, I think, Rob last week when we talked about Marvel has now beat you to the punch at the multiverse, which you easily could have beat to the punch. Multiverse, and they're beating you to the punch 
I'm the Atlanteans versus the Amazonians, basically. Like, yeah. it's basically the same. Like you, you're you got beaten to your two biggest punches, and they kicked your ass at getting there, and they didn't even try to get there. They were like, "Oh, we'll wait till phase 27." <laughs> it's like they were in no rush to get there, and now by the time the multiverse happens in the Flash, we're gonna be tired of it. We're gonna be like, "Oh my God, we're still on multiverse stuff." Boy, you know, it's like, "Oh, how did how did you drop the ball?" Do you guys want to see something cool? This is a Batman pen, pencil, oh. from Batman Returns. Sure. Look at look at the look at the dust on that. The sticker emblem fell off probably a decade or so ago. But that is this is original. This is this is from 1991. Is it is sharpened? That, Are you going to write with it? It's not sharpened. I've never sharpened it in, oh. in in 30 in 31 years. I've never sharpened it. Made in Taiwan. Not recommended for children under three. My aunt got me that years ago. It's my favorite pencil that I'll never ever use. Is that technically an eraser? Like, is the Batman an eraser? No, he's not. He's not. He's, he's just a topper. Yeah. I have something <laughs> similar. It's a a very old Mickey Mouse pencil. Oh yeah, I, I think oh! I did the exact same one. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, I got. Out. He's just hanging on. Never been sharpened. We're, we're showing our. <laughs> there you go. My, this <laughs> this Aladdin pencil has been sharpened, Andrew. I know you like Aladdin. Ooh. I'm out of the uh, police pencil game. I don't. I don't have any pencils by me. Damn it, Rob! <laughs> you're screwing up. Uh, here's a question: do, do you think this is going to, in any way, positive or negative? affect the uh the sales or the uh, just affect the overall performance of the gotham knights video game not the video game but the show what the hell's the point of the show how is what? the show still happening it's a, <laughs> <laughs> like just break back background into like 20 parts and make it a limited series instead of putting <laughs> gotham knights on i don't think it's going to affect the game no i don't the game that like, it's going to get delayed seven more times anyway it comes out in October still, though I think, right? Or did it get pushed to? Yeah, I think October twenty eighth. It's still now. But, for but now. do you? Have, but you have to have the new Xbox or a PlayStation Five, you can or a, or a PC. It's not on the old stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's they've pretty much stopped making games for the uh, last generation. So Rob, I'm coming over. You're gonna invite me over. I'm gonna get you drunk, and when you wake up, you won't have a PS Five anymore. That's <laughs> so you're gonna wake up. Well, I like Sounds like another Friday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, James, you take my PS5? I wasn't even over. I don't know what you're talking about. What are you doing? I Playing didn't know PS4? that. That just made me really sad. I yeah, I'm sorry. I had to tell you because I knew you didn't know. Uh, unless they changed something, but no. Why is the plan... universe trying to deprive me of Batgirl? What's going on here? It's so true. You're never going to get Batgirl. I don't know about it. Jesus Lord. Batgirl's never really been had a good experience theatrically or in movies at all. Like Alicia Silverstone, fantastic Barbara Pennyworth, and <laughs> the greatest Batgirl of all. That's not very PC. Uh, and then, and then, um, is that the only theatrical Batgirl we've had? I'm trying to like, well, I mean, the only other one that we could kind of say is Rosario Dawson as uh, Lego Batgirl in the Lego Batman movie, but I no, guess that wouldn't that <laughs> a animated, animated doesn't count anyway. <laughs> the 60s doesn't count, so it's like Alicia Silverstone. Wasn't there another instance of a live action Batgirl? I don't believe so. No, no, that's brutal. Yeah, anyway, uh, this whole thing is weird. Um, it's it, it's not. It's not weird. I shouldn't say weird. It's strange that they they axed it so late in the game. It's like they were like going through like we're making a Batgirl movie. Bring me the DVD, and then someone was like, "So we don't use DVDs anymore." He goes, "Bring me the VHS." And Zaslav watched it and said, "This cannot happen." I do believe though that it it was probably like an okay at best movie that was never going to get better unless they spent a ton of money, like Rob said, on it, and and it could have. You know, it could have weakened the, the DCEU, which is something they don't want to. The one problem for me right now is that we talked about is just to trust that everybody's going to have with Warner Brothers. Who the hell is going to want to make a movie over there right now? Exactly. I, I guess the, the only real way to earn, you have to earn that trust back and it might take some time. But I like Christopher Nolan left uh, last year, right? He's like, hey, screw you. I'm making Oppenheimer over there. And he went over there and has the coolest poster. And, like, so, I don't know. They've lost a lot of trust with a lot of directors already. I can't see this helping for now. Maybe if – I mean, but also we're not in those rooms, so maybe people are like, no, this was actually the right move. There's real direction over there now for the first time, which is a possibility for sure. 
Well, I'll spin one thing as a positive sense, okay? And, you know, it's one that we found out, I believe, either at the end of last year or at the very early this year, that um, uh, the Blue Beetle movie was going to move to theaters, right? Mm-hmm. And seemingly, about this whole time since that David Zaz have taken over, we haven't heard anything like, you know, aside from, you know, the casting and when it was starting to shoot and all that stuff about, you know, any possible bad rumblings or anything about Blue, Blue Beetle. So it makes me wonder, either we're going to find out something about Blue Beetle soon about that being canceled as well, or it's a very good thing for Blue Beetle because seemingly David Zaslav and uh, the new DC and Warner Brothers regime think that that movie is of good quality and that it's going to help their brand in order to release that. So I think if, if we don't hear anything within the next month about Blue Beetle being canceled as well, I think that means really good things for them. So- they have until the middle of the month for the tax crap. That's what the axes. Oh, really? For that movie as well? So I don't know if they're going to make any more axes like that. I think it's it's no, it's for all their whole slate. It's for the tax. It ends at the middle of this month. I see. Okay. So that's why they got. That's why the Batgirl. That's why they did Scoob. Um. So so that's what's going on. So I think Blue Beetle is safe now. If it isn't looking so good, who knows what they're going to do? Because yeah, but also yeah, I. I have faith in Blue Beetle. I think it's. I think they're going to let that one go. I think that one's going to be allowed. Um, I don't know what the budget was, but it might already be big enough. I mean, they they're going. The plan was theatrical for that one anyway, much like Black Adam and Shazam. And but originally, had, when they when they first announced it, I they believe they announced it as HBO Max. Long they back. did. They did. Then they switched. And then they so I'm it. guessing. I'm guessing the script and everything was good enough to justify theatrical. So they probably raised the budget for it to be theatrical as well. That's what. That's my guess. Because if yeah. they didn't raise the budget to be theatrical, then uh, 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 you're how, out of here. <laughs> how does that thing work? I forget the industry name for it, but that thing where the filmmakers and the actors they receive like one percent of the box office gross or something yeah. as like their back pay. Uh-huh. Um, how does that work now for Batgirl? Who's paying Leslie Grace? Who's paying these directors? And everybody uh, I don't. I I, so I don't. I don't think they, ha- they didn't have that deal. I bet. They probably yeah, because it, because it was always it was never changed to go to a theatrical. It was always just HBO Max. I don't think that they have to worry about any of that type of thing. Okay, yeah, so so they got paid. Yeah, well, yeah, they, they got, got paid, paid for that. They're just not getting the residuals. I, I guess that uh, yeah, you right. know, um, like a Black Widow was supposed like a Black Widow, Scarlet Witch, Scarlet Johansson, I should say. <laughs> I was supposed to. I'm getting all my Scarlets and the uh, stuff mixed up. Uh, like she she was supposed to get seemingly in their contract for Black Widow. And right. that she had to renegotiate and, you know, have that whole kerfuffle the thing that happened with uh, her and uh, Disney is there. But, uh, yeah, so I don't I don't I don't believe that they're going to have to worry about any of that stuff for Thoros Leslie and the directors and so forth. I wonder if there was merch that that has already been like made because when was it supposed to come out in November? Yeah, I think it was originally supposed to come in November and then it just got pulled off the slate. So, like, that's two months. There might be merch floating around somewhere right yeah it might be like a, a hasbro not even hasbro because they don't have a deal with dc but like lego or something just and what happens there yeah just kind of i don't know if they did anything but it was because i don't know if because yeah it was a december release for batgirl and then i don't think i don't know i they've also been made, delayed nobody's they're... making nothing <laughs> They've also been delaying merch, like seemingly with a lot of projects as well. So maybe with that, those delays, they were able to get to it in time. Like, how long did it take when, like, Zack Snyder's Justice League came out in uh, in you know, for HBO Max? Like, it, it took, I believe, a, a few months before the actual merch came out. Like, uh, in terms of the, the figures and, and whatnot. So they, that that might be a similar. Yeah, situation. that was that was that summer. Yeah, because I got yeah. the I got the Batfleck um, uh, McFarlane. Yeah. So it was that it was that summer it was like August or July July I think it was. So Right. Right. Maybe so, in uh, 2046 uh some somebody'll show up on the internet with like hey I have an exclusive legitimate backroll action figure that was produced by whatever company and never distributed or put into our stores. Well, when you're talking about the figures, it could be one day soon, like within the near future that the movie in general could be leaked online in some type of way, right? Like, you know, the unfinished version of Batgirl in general. So you might be able to see it one day. It become, might become like the that uh, 
what was it? Roger Corman, uh, Roger uh, Fantastic Corman. Foreman, Fantastic Four movie uh, from the nineties, yeah. like where that that leaked online, and how the uh, uh, the opening scene for Deadpool got leaked online before all that. Oh, that wasn't uh, a leak. Let's be honest. Well, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, was, that, Ryan, was, that, that was Ryan. That was Ryan. That was Ryan and Tim Har Tim Miller basically going. It's like, yeah. hey, you pass this to twelve friends. I'll pass this to twelve friends, and we'll get it out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it'll be like the Richard Donner cut. It'll show up. Um, yeah. People will be clamoring for it. Uh, yeah, and, but 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 I don't believe that Warner Brothers will be able to officially release it any type of way. Otherwise, no, I think I, I would assume that they would lose all all the tax yeah. tax stuff that they would be that they would be getting out of it. So if if they wanted to save some kind of face right now, what they should do is as quickly as possible is get Leslie Grace as Batgirl and give her a cameo in something within like the next eight months, like put her in something. Yeah, that yeah, was that, their, that was in their official press release, I believe, right? When they talked about it and they said that they would like to work with these people again in the future and and so forth. Uh, when Warner Brothers officially released it, so you know, unless the race could still be, wind up being Batgirl, just not in this movie. Yeah, you kind of wonder, like maybe I don't know, I, like did they ruin it with her though? Like, would she even want to? That's a question. I think she probably would. She seemed like she had a blast doing it, but. But now she's been scoring. Like, who's to say she does the movie and then and then they're like, Nah, we uh, we're gonna can that one too. Uh, you know, like, how does she trust them ever again? Is a big problem. Yeah, I mean, like, she hasn't come out with anything. Like, uh, the, the directors released a statement and said that they were devastated and so forth. And it's like, it was a they're nasty situation. Wedding. Yeah, they were asked uh, at one of their weddings. Like, I don't know, one one of the one of the brothers apparently was getting a. Uh, uh, married, so yeah, it's it's a shame. It's a crappy time for the news to come out, but uh, yeah, like I wonder what Le Le Leslie Grace's situation with this whole thing is, and you know, if 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 by chance it was it went ended on good terms, and they and she spoke to David Zaslav, and you know maybe she has faith in uh, Zaslav. So it would be nice if she got to play the part again in something, because I think we like she's she's. Posted that picture of her in costume, which some people liked. I liked. I liked it actually. Some people didn't. Some people liked it. Um, but I think we've all seen her as Batgirl. And I think we all accepted her as Batgirl, and just waiting to watch it. So throw her in. Make. I think they need to. They need to do the. Uh, oh, it was Gotham Knights. I was saying it's trash. Not. Do I say Titans or trash? Whatever. They need to make that Gotham. A Gotham Knights movie, like a really good Gotham Knights movie, not the show that's coming out. The movie, a movie, movie, a really good Gotham Knights movie, and they can utilize her in that for sure. Yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be nice to throw her that bone. But like you guys said, it's the trust is going to be uh, really hard to come by around the WB offices for actors and filmmakers, right? Because they can slide however big figures they want on their contract across the table. But the person sitting on the other end of that contract is going to be like, how do I know these eight months of hard work are going to pay off now? Because you clearly guaranteed money. Yeah. Guaranteed money. Yeah, my only thing that I'm thinking is that it's like because this movie was greenlit by another regime and then this one was axed by yeah, another, by a different one. That's where I think it helps, right? It's not right. like it's not like David Zaslav didn't greenlit greenlit this movie and then he axed it. So yeah, that's that's great. that's yeah. the one thing that gives me faith and I where I think that some people might be a little bit more open to uh yeah working with them again i would agree with that for sure all right let's wrap it up andrew where can everybody find you oh you can find me on twitter and instagram at andrew fantasia and you can find me on my youtube channel andrew fantasia i didn't get creative with the name uh i'm talking about westworld there right now because it feels like i'm always talking about westworld there rob uh, yeah, you can find me at Robert E. McDonald on both uh, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, I've watched, uh, I think, three episodes of the first season of Westworld, and I never went back to it. Maybe I'll go back one day, but we'll see. And aside from that, uh, Letterboxd uh, uh, at Nightwing with a six instead of a G. Uh, I just watched Man of Steel again because, uh, yeah, I'm doing a little mini review on a, on a, on a wrestling podcast. We're going to talk a little bit of Man, Man of Steel, so I'm looking forward to that, and uh, it should be fun. Man of Steel Wrestling Podcast. Man of Steel, right. why not? Yeah. Why not? Absolutely. Check <laughs> that out. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe. We've got to do a are you guys gonna watch Prey this weekend? We should do a Prey review. I'm gonna do a Prey review. Mm -hmm. Let me know if you guys see it. 
to talk about. Right now, it's currently sitting at 100% of Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, a whopping 27 reviews. So don't get too excited. The director, <laughs> the director did tweet it, enjoying this while it lasts, indicating that every, you know somebody's gonna be like, ah. But anyway, so anyway, that's what that is. Thanks everybody for watching. Give me a like and subscribe. Like I said, until next time, may you be the master of your own universe. Thank you.